So yeah, how, how do we how do we actually write it? So basically, uh, in C++, it's kind of easy. We just have something like vectors of integers, which is variable size array. That 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 is uh, that that increases its size as we add elements. But basically, this increasing of of array is amortized constant time. So 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 basically, we 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 really get this. All of m space, right? Because it, it it takes up a vector takes up approximately as much space as we have elements, right? So for each node, we have one vector of one vector of of, of the the things the, the nodes adjacent to it. And in Java, we have equivalent of vector being array list of integer, and we also make an array of these vectors, so that for each node, this single array list is is like uh, singular array list is single this game, right? And we have and we have n of them, right? Uh, the, the problem with Java is that we uh, ca ca cannot really instantiate the arrays of generics, uh, which is like array list of integer is generic because we have this integer over there. So this is not allowed in Java. So we have to write some class which is a wrapper for this array list of integer. And this wrapper class would, wouldn't itself be an, an generic, right? So that, that then we would be able to, to use it as a have array of such a classes of an object as a class, right? Uh, so first uh, first problem uh, counting triangles. So, okay, so triangle is this little body. So if we have a graph that looks sort of like this, and we are interested in the number of triangles, so it's such a triple of, of nodes that all of these nodes are connected to each other, right? And how many such a triangles do we have in a graph, right? So, how can we calculate this? Any, any simple ideas? Do it have to be directly connected, or can it also be? Uh... No, no, no. They, they have. To, we don't allow something like this. No, no. They, they have to be connected directly. No, I mean, but if you, for example, take the upper four points, yes, you take the far left, the far right, and the bottom point. Because so, the, sorry, if I take these four points and what? Next? Yeah, because the, the the far left and far right points they're connected by another point. So you could say that. It's yeah, yeah, I, I know. Actually, no, no, we we would have to we would need this edge. So for this, we we need them to be directly adjusted. Uh, directly. It's not 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 it's just transfer. not just reachable sort okay. of right. Uh, okay, so so how how can we do it? Like simple, uh, any algorithm that works, any idea. What if you use the data structure we had? You can just check which the one? numbers correlate. Um, the second one, which is adjacency matrix. Yeah, where you have the yeah we have this. yeah we have this adjacency matrix, and it allows us to do what? Wait. Uh, no, I was saying the second one. The, one the, the list. The, okay. The list, right? Okay. So you can check that each item has the other two. Each item list. has the each uh, vertex. Each vertex has the other two. Yeah. So so we take all the three poles, right? So 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 we have n cubed three poles, and for each of these we check if they have two others as neighbors, right? So well, so how 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 expensive is such a check for single triple? Um. So we would have this list, right? We have we, we have our triple A, B, C, and we would have entries for A, for B, and for C somewhere, right? And and then they can contain some elements here, and for each one we check whether it contains B and C, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so such a check is like three three scans basically over this list, right? And this list can be pessimistic or order of n length, right? Because because if we have like 
this graph that I showed you, the full graph, right? Then, then each such a list would have n nodes, right? Yeah. Right. So, so, so the overall complexity of your algorithm is n to the power of fourth. Agree? Yeah. Okay. So, can we do better? Then? Mm. So, what, what basically happens if we use if you use adjacency matrix instead? If we have like, all right, it's easier to check with the other. What do you mean by easier? Uh, I mean, um, well, because it it tells you, you it the structure tells you, uh, which one because you can just use the coordinates. So basically, to get. Which so so what's the complexity when you reuse adjacency matrix uh, of single check? This is just n squared. Well, like this, like this is after the third three balls, right? And and for each three ball, the check is constant complexity. Yeah. Because because we just we just take our this is m, right? And we check if m of a b, so is a and b connected? Is m of b c? Sorry. Uh, and is M of C A, right? And this, so we just take these three logical things, and if they, all three are true, then we know this is a triangle, right? A B C is a triangle, right? So so this check is constant complexity. So we have all of n to the power of third, right? Which is better. Can we do even better? Well, we can. Uh, uh, I'll show you in a second how. Uh, so basically, the next improvement is not going to be in terms of complexity. It will be in terms of actual constant. Act actual. So basically, this means that 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 the actual number of operations we 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 do is less than c times n to the third, and we would decrease this constant, right? So so how? So, so how, how, how can we do it? Well, have you heard about bit masks? No. Okay. So, so that's 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 new. That's cool. So basically, we would have sort of a hybrid of this adjacency list and adjacency matrix, kind of, but it's more like adjacency matrix to be honest. So basically, the whole idea is that if we have our our adjacency matrix, right? It has these n rows, right? And it, and instead of having one, two, three, four, five, up to n here, right? We would just pack every child of thirty-two into one integer. So basically. We would take this. We, let's let's focus on the first row first, right? So so we look at the first row, and then we take first thirty-two values, right? And they would be all either true or false, right? So either zero or one, right? So so say it's something like zero, one, zero, zero, one, right? Then we can pack it up all into single unsigned integer, for example, right? Which which would just represent this as a bit value. So so this would change to something like one, two, three, five, and over thirty-two, right? We would have like packs of thirty-two here, right? So that that's easy. So that now now instead of taking up n squared space, it takes up n squared over thirty-two, right? So this is less space, and and now. Oh, oh, why is that good, basically? Why is that better for our algorithm? Well, basically, what we do is we, so we have some here bubbles of 32, 32 chunks, 32, 32 numbers, like, uh, like, uh, packed into the integer, right? And we have 
sort of these different bubbles and so on and here as well right so what what do we do how, how is that helpful well okay so we choose we choose our triangle to have two vertices a and b right and and then we will think about the third one in a second so so such a pairs we have all of them squared right so now what do we do so suppose a and b is one and two Right? So how do we so so now having these two and having checked that actually A and B is connected, right? Before. So we know that A and B is connected. So so we have such an A and B, right? And we look for all such a C's that they are connected that such a C that is connected to A and is connected to B, right? Okay. So so what, what, what does it actually mean? It means that if we have, for example, one connected to, the, that not, not connected to itself, obviously, but, well, okay, let's maybe look over here. So one is connected to four, two is connected to four as well, one is not connected to five, two is connected to five, six is connected to, six is not connected to one and six is not connected to two, right? And then we have like uh, 29 others in this path, right? So, so when we take logical end of these two, right? Then we, we will have one in the at, at the point where for each vertices that, that is connected to to each a and b, right? Do you understand? Okay. Oh, sort of. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we have one here, zero here, zero here, and indeed only four is connected to both one and two, right? So, so we do that end for all the packages, right? So, so it will be another here. Well, that's not all. Let's call it like this. End over thirty-two operation, and then when we have, when we actually have this resulting bubbles of this end operation, of all of them, then for each bubble, we have to count the number of ones, right? So, if we counted the number of ones just like naively, then, then it would be like, then, then, then it would be uh, like really bad because then it will bring another times end here, right? So, what we do instead is we uh, learn a decent programming language like C++ and then we use built-in command underscore underscore build in underscore pop count of, of n which takes an integer and it basically counts the number of ones but it does it more efficiently than just as, if, as just doing a for and counting one by one, it actually does it in like sort of single, single or two. I don't remember process operations, right? And and then 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 it means that we just count the number of ones here, add it, count the number of ones here, add it, count the number of ones here, add it. So we still have this n over thirty-two, right? And then then we have this many operations. So our algorithm actually runs thirty-two times faster. But does that immediately give the amount of triangles? Because it only says that one goes to four and two to goes to four. But it well, doesn't say that one is connected to well, two. Well, so, so, okay, uh, well, okay. Let, 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 let me actually, okay, repeat it really quickly and, and make it, like, structurized. So, so we choose A and B that says that they are connected, oh, right? right? yeah, okay. that's where the answer is. So, so, so when we find all other vertices that are connected to both A and B, then they form a triangle. Yeah, okay, so you already know. So for each know. pair, we count the number of triangles that contains this pair. Right? Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to 30 times faster. 30 times faster. Okay. So th these are bit masks. They are also usable in all sorts of other cases. And you, it's worth always considering them when we have some, some matrix of some of true values, like square 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 array of true values. Sometimes we can do some calculations on this matrix faster by using bit masks. 
and, and it's quite often significantly faster. Okay, so that's that this little trick. BFS, well, so as I said, basic graph theory. Uh, does anybody, any of you know BFS already? No. Okay. So, area, uh, the general idea is to, to have your graph. Let it be something like, well, whatever. And we sort of want to scan the vertices. We want to do some work on this graph, basically. Right? Because we have some structure, but we also have to do something with it. So we want to do some work. So basically, in general, BFS algorithm does nothing. But, but the thing is, we can, it's sort of like meta algorithm, which we can use later on to perform some other stuff. But this is sort of general technique. So, so basically, what we do is, we have, we have our vertices number. And basically, we, start, we have to choose some starting point, so say 3, right? And we visit, we, we, so, and we have some Q, Q. So, and we add 3 to this Q, right? And then, well, we choose 3, mark it as visited, and, uh, and add all of it do something with tree. Basic, basically, this is we execute some function on this this vertical, and then we add all of its neighbors to the queue. So we add one, two, four, five, two, and six. Well, that's boring to the queue, and mark them immediately as visited. Well, and then and then move on to the next one, move to the first one. And we we basically add all its neighbors, right? But two and three are already visited. We want only to visit one vertical, one vertical once. Say, well, say there was something like eight here, right? Then we would add eight at the end of the queue, right? And uh, and so on. So 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 then 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 we go to what's that? That's two. Yeah. Sorry for my handwriting. Uh, yeah, and, and, but here F was executed. We execute F again and add all these neighbors, sort of, right? And, and so on. And finally, we get to six. six. We add seven. Uh, we, uh, six, so we, we add seven. Mark it as visited. Then we move on to eight. Execute function on, on eight. Well, uh, it's supposed, supposed to be marked as visited before. So uh, like, I will try to cut in a second, it will become more, more clear. But basically, the, the property of BFS is that it, the order it executes this algorithm in is basically, it first choose like sort of, it, it partition the graph into sort of layers. It first choose the zeroth layer, then all of the vertices that are of the uh, one edge away. Are are uh, are sort of covered by this algorithm, right? So we would have another layer here, which would be this is zero layer, this is first layer, and then we have third layer of vertices, which are two edges away from the center, right? So and so for basically here we have first application of BFS. Well, first application is given a graph and a pair of vertices uh, of nodes uv, right? Find the shortest path between them in terms of number of edges, right? So, so then, then we do such a BFS and to, to each, each new children we sort of propagate which layer it's going to be. So basically we start from three and we indicate in our queue that three is of zero layer, right? Then, then when we move on from three to one, fr from three to all its children, we indicate that they are going to be one layer, and so on, right? 
and uh, and then these these guys are going to be second layer, right? And so on. And then then we'll suppose u equals three and v equals seven. Then we know that the shortest path between between three and seven is of length of two edges because it's on the second layer. But we could have as well something like nine here, ten here, which is connected to seven, which will be like a sort of longer path between three and seven. Uh, but 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 we would know that as seven is in the second layer, the length of the shortest path between them is two, right? Because this would be in the first layer, this would be in the second layer, and then it would mean that seven would be theoretically in the third layer, but it's not it's in the second, right? Okay, so so this is BFS. Uh, let me show how it's implemented. So so basically, what we do is we scan the number of edges and number of uh, of nodes, right? And it's sort of like the the, the 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 way we usually represent the graph at the standard input is just like by what I told you. So by this set of nodes uh, and set of edges. So, so then we read this set of edges. So we read this just pairs of numbers that are connected, right? And, and, as, and here, here, uh, here we just use this list representation, right? So we have this vector, uh, this, this array of vectors, G, right? And we sort of like, let's do a quick example of that so, do, so that I'm sure you so, so, so basically, on the input we have three the number of nodes and two the number of edges, right? And then, then we have one two and one three representing the these two edges, right? And then basically, when we when we get to this stage, we have initial empty list, right? And then when we read one two, right? We add two to one. And one to two, right? This is this is what this this pushbacks do, right? And then we read this one, and we add three to one and one to three, right? And then we have this G, right? And here we take Q of integers BFS, right? And we push to the front, to, sorry, to the back of the Q, and then. While Q is not empty, we pop from the front, right? So, so we push at the back and pop from the front, right? Repeatedly. And then we're doing something with the node. And, uh, and then, then for all its neighbors that are not yet visited, right? So, so, so basically, here we have this G, this, this of current node, so if current node is 1, this is g, basically 2 and 3, right? And we iterate of it, over it, so, so th this is what takes the if value here, so this is 0 value, this is 1 value, right? And, uh, and we, we push it to BFS q if it's not visited yet, and we mark it as visited, right? So that we never, never visit two nodes twice. So basically, because what could happen in principle when we, when we, well, if you had such an example, then we would push one, well, maybe that's not a good example, uh, well, okay, let me actually, Well, okay, so we basically, if we had such a graph, two, three, and four, right? Then we first visit this one, then we visit these two, one after another, before visiting four. And this would try to push four to the BFS queue, and this one would try to push four to the BFS queue. That's why we immediately after adding the node, we have to mark it as visited, so that it's not added twice, right? So that's easy. Uh, 
Well, yeah, and let's let's just quickly see it running. And well, let's take this really simple example. Oh, no, no, no. Right? So, so what it does, it's basically, it's, it's this simple example, right? So it goes from 1, it, it, it goes to 2 and 3, and it visits 2 first and then 3, right? So that's, that's easy. It's going to get more advanced soon. Well, so DFS, DFS is a little bit more complicated. Actually, less complicated, sorry. Uh, so basically, what it does um, is uh, it basically, it's called depth first search. So, so the one that is the deep, deepest gets searched first, sort of. So if we start from one, we go as far as we can, so we go down, well, let's, let's draw it actually, we go down, down, we cannot go any further, so we visit, check, check this one, right? Uh, well, basically on our way, we already checked guys, these guys as visited, but not yet executed. And now, here we are here, we execute this one, and we backtrack, and we go to next one. We mark it as visited, we cannot go any further, so we execute it, and we backtrack. Well, from here, we can go further here, mark it as visited. Well, we try to go here, but this one is already visited, so we don't do this. So then we look for any other options. There are no other options, so we execute this one and backtrack. And from this one, we look for any other options. Well, we went already to this screen. This one is already visited, so we cannot go there. So we execute this one, and we backtrack. And now, from the first one, we already went there. This one is already visited and executed, so we stop. Right? And th this is kind of nice and easy. And so what, what, what basically can we do? Well, first of all, let's, let's look at the implementation really quickly. So DFS, I think it's e much easier to implement. Well, we just read the graph as we did before, and we execute DFS of one, right? And now, now what we do basically is we execute this function DFS, right? We write a recursive definition of DFS. So basically, it gets some current node, it marks it as, vi as visited, it does something to this node. Well, I suppose I should according to what I told you, I should put this slide over, over there. Uh, and that, so it, it goes to this node, marks it as visited, and then immediately goes to every node that is not yet visited, right? So, 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 it basi so basically it's like DFS of here scans through all his nodes, all, all his neighbors that are not visited. So it immediately invokes DFS of this, and immediately it invokes DFS of this. And this has only no, only neighbors that are visited, so execute this one, right? And, um, okay. So, so this is the, the implementation. It's nice, easy, and simple, I think. And, um, well, 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 that, that actually, that's a boring example, but basically what it does, it goes here, oh sorry, it uh, goes to, well, shouldn't, well, hang on, I didn't save the file, I think, yeah. So again. Right, so, so it starts, starts with one, goes to 2, 
can go not, not, on, not nowhere else, so executes two, but right, goes to three, executes three, and back, right, right? And then executes one at the very end, right? Okay, so so that's that's kind of really easy. So, well, let's finally do something a little bit more interesting, which is an application. So this is a family tree that we have, right? So what's a tree? Tree is a, actually a, a little bit of an asset tree is an important structure in graph theory. Well, basically it means that there is exactly one path to go between each pair of vertices, right? So so I, I think you all, all probably know trees, right? So, so there is exactly one path between any pair of vertices. For example, for these two, there, there is this one, and no, 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 no less and no more than one path, right? This actually implies that we know how many edges we have, given the, given the number of vertices. So if we have n, n nodes, right? How many edges do we have here? Any idea? Like, think about the way you, when do you draw edge, basically? Like, when you have one ver vertices, you have zero edges, right? And you, when you add another one, you have to draw an edge to it. So for, minus one. So n minus one, exactly. Right? So, so that, 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 that's easy. So, so yeah, let's, let's draw it so that, so, so three can, in principle, represent some hierarchies. So, like like family tree, for example, right? So this means that this is a like head of a family. These are his children. These are his grandchildren, and these are his grand grandchildren, right? <coughs> and, like, and now the problem is how to quickly check whether this guy is descendant of this guy. Right? Well, it is, right? But for example, this guy is not a descendant of this guy, right? Okay, so, so how, how, do, how do we quickly check that? Well, we run our wonderful DFS, and this time, let me actually show you the code right away, it's going to be much easier, I think. This time, we do something before entering uh, the node and after entering the node, after leaving it, sorry. So, we sort of calculate pre-order enumeration and post-order enumeration, right? So, sort of, because it's not, not entirely this, but okay, let's, so basically, before we enter this, when, at the time we enter this one, we calculate its pre-order time. We enter this one, calculate its pre-order time, and enter this one, calculate its pre-order pre time, and then when, can, when we leave this one, we already leave this one because we have nowhere to go from it, we calculate post-order time, right? Which is four. Uh, then here, we are not leaving this one yet. We are going down. So pre-order, post-order. Uh, here we cannot go any further, so it's seven, right? So th this one we are not leaving yet, right? We go here. We mark it at 8, 9, 10, well, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right, 17, well, let me, let, let's leave it like this. Uh, yeah, and finally, well, this, this would, let, let me actually finish that. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 23, 24, right? And now, when, when, when we when we finish, well, why would we do that? So, so now, now looking at this number, right? How do you have any idea how to quickly check whether this one is a parent of this one, and this one should not be a parent of this one? Well, it is actually. Sorry, this one is not a parent of this one. So, 
So, so right. this one is not a part of this one, but this one is a part of this one. Parrot has a less pre-order, but a um, greater post-order so, than the child. Yeah, and, and if it's not a father, then? Those won't hold, right? Yeah, the, the, okay, let's think about this as an interval, basically. Okay. So, so this interval would be contained in this interval. Okay. And this interval would be disjoint with this interval, otherwise, right? So, and this is exactly yeah. That's that's a very good answer. Well done. So, so this this is what we actually do here. We we run this DFS, right? Assuming one is the head of family, the the first one ever born in that family, and then we we check exactly what what, what you said, right? So we check this one. I don't know. I, do you want me to run it or is it? Clear how it works. Okay. Yeah, because we probably. Okay, so so directed acyclic graph. Uh, so this means if has the property is directed and acyclic. So so what does directed mean? Do you remember? That what does it mean that graph is directed? It meant there are no cycles. Well, no, I think we meant there is no cycles. So directed means that the edges are directed, basically. Yeah. So so they are they are like one way. So basically, you can think about like in in if you have indirect graph, then then it has a sort of sets of representing the edges, right? And so on. Because it doesn't the order doesn't matter, right? When it when it comes to directed graph, instead of small sets, we will have sequences. Right? Where two three doesn't equal three four, right? And here we have sets, so set containing two and three equals set containing three and two, right? So this this is the difference, right? So we have some directed graph, right? So uh, right? And well we want it to be acyclic. Is this graph acyclic? Yes, and uh, if I add this edge, then it has a cycle, right? Because it has a cycle here, right? So directed acyclic, acyclic graph has some really important properties, and they are used a lot. I think I definitely heard it on the discrete mathematics two course. We used the directed acyclic graph at some point. I don't remember what it was, but I remember there was. One measure, but basically it, it, it emerges everywhere, and the simple, simple possible. It, it basically it it imposes some par partial order on, on the node, right? So node can be everything, and it can have some partial order imposed. So say, well, let me not let me give you a real life example. So we have well shorts. Has to be worn before trousers. Well, socks before shoes. Well, well, let's let's make it maybe a little bit more interesting. So, in general, like. Uh, underwear before trousers and probably in case of ladies before sh before t-shirt and and so on and well well basically let's make some start node right which is sort of artificial node marking beginning of the process right so so and but and basically yeah say. 
So we have this so we have this long t-shirt in case of ladies, which requires you to wear trousers first, right? So so this is the directed ACP graph, right? And let's suppose that our lady is so hungover that she, it's too difficult to her to work out how, in which order to dress. So she but she's an excellent programmer, so she writes a program. Uh, so so how would it work? So basically, this problem is called topological sorting. So we want to sort these things. This is, let, let's mark it, it's start. We want to sort these things so that, so that we only, only wear underwear when we have all the required things uh, needed. So, so we cannot wear trousers before we have underwear and t-shirt, right? So, and we want to sort this all things such that this will satisfy. So, there is like loads of algorithms to achieve that, but there is one simple one. So, so how would you, how, 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 do, any ideas how, how to have a go about solving? Well, let's maybe, maybe think about how would you do it on paper, and maybe we'll come up with some algorithm then. So, we definitely can start with start, right? And then, we cross it out, and well, this one, and this one becomes available, because all its dependencies, right, are already satisfied. So we cross out these dependencies, right? Well, sorry, that, that should be directed, as I said. Uh, and then we choose underwear. We cross it out and cross out these two dependencies, right? So these things are available. So we can choose a uh, no, t-shirt now. But there are many such, such, an, such a solutions to this problem, right? So we can choose t-shirt, then we can choose, then we cross out these dependencies, trousers became available, but we can choose to do socks now, for example, that's, that's okay. Well, then we can do, well, there's probably dependency here as well. Uh, so we can do trousers. And at the end, shoes. Right? So, so basically, this idea with crossing out the arrows is going to be the core idea of our our program. So basically, we would calculate something that is called input degree. Right? So input degree means how many arrows do point at me. Right? So basically, say, let's quickly rewrite it with, without using the names. Right? So so input degree. So so this has zero input degree, right? This has one input degree, this has one input degree, this has one input degree, this has two and this has two, right? And now so what do we do? Well, so given that input degrees only, which nodes can we start with? The ones with degree one. With degree one. Zero. Or zero, yeah. zero. It cannot have any dependencies when when we actually we we actually use it. So we can choose this one, right? And then what happens? We cross out these dependencies. So this is zero now, right? And then. We can use both of, both of these. So we use this one, we cross out these dependencies, so this is 0, this is 1. Well, we, we get, and this one is done. Then we can do this one, and we cross out this dependency. Then we can do this one, cross out this dependency. Well, this one is already 0, so we can do this. So we cross out this dependency, 0, and we can do this one, right? 
uh, this sort of pieces the the or and this is really important algorithm. And it's really simple, so I think you might want to remember this one. And here is how to implement it. It's a topological sort. So um, so basically this this is this is how it works. It, this time we have only one pushback, right? Because uh, because basically the graph is directed, right? And then we have edge from u to v, so we increase v's input order, right? An input order is just represented as an array of integers, right? For each node, we keep it integer representing its input order. Then, uh, then we quickly at the beginning we have some vector t s, which would represent our nodes sorted in the topological order, right? And uh, and we push all the edges that has that have input degree zero to this topological sort uh, vector sort of right. So so what, what we do then is um, is we basically analyze them one by one, right? It, uh, keep in mind that size of this TS array size it will increase as we add new vertices, verticals at the end. And then for 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 each node that is a neighbor of that one, we decrease its uh, decrease its uh, input uh, input uh, degree, and then if this input degree was decreased to zero, then we push it back at the end of this topological sort, right? And then we print out this topological sort that we got. So so. So basically, if we take this one to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, yeah, then, then we have um, 6 nodes and 7 edges, I believe. Yes? 6 nodes, 7 edges. And I don't know if you. Alright, 1, 2. Two. Two, mm -hmm. yes. One, three. Yes. Which one, what's the first one you did? Uh, six, seven. All right. No, no. All right. You've got two, four, and two, five. Two, four, two, five. You four, got five. Four, five. Four, five. Four, five. Uh, five, six, and three, six. Five, six, six. Five, six and three, six. Well, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's uh, legit, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Exactly. That's 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 the right order. And sort of it's it's like it says you in which order they're processed, and then like from one we decrease the order of two to zero, order of three to zero, and stuff. So this is a this is basically how to do it. It's a really simple algorithm, basically. Uh, yeah. There you go. Oh, that's more advanced. Uh, well. Yeah, so strongly connected components. Do you have time for this or do I want to do something? Oh, well, strongly, okay, let, let me do other cycle first because it's more important. And sort of it appears every now and then in, in lots of problems. You have five minutes. Okay, well, Oops. Okay, yeah, let's see. So basically, other cycle, it, there, are, there are two major, like, important cycles in graph theory that you should know about. One is other cycle, the other one is uh, Hamiltonian cycle. And the, it's really funny because they are sort of look really similar, but one of them is linear to compute, the other one is MP difficult. Do you know what does MP difficult mean? What does MP difficult mean? Well, it's an unknown polynomial complexity. So what? It's an unknown polynomial complexity. Well, P has polynomial complexity. Yeah. NP means yeah. non-polynomial. Yeah. No, oh, sorry, I didn't catch the word. No, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, so it means basically it's it's for high entire cycle for n nodes is two to the power of n, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, 
either sum case of m, where m is the number of edges basically to compute. Well, so basically, let's let's do directed uh, indirected graph Euler cycle. So Euler cycle. Well, that's not going to work. I hope that one will. Okay, so so Euler cycle is such a cycle that um, it visits all the edges, basically, exactly once, right? And now, without that strict mathematical proof, uh, I will give you the, the property that, that says that this, this one is, uh, this is possible. Well, basically, each, each node has to be of uh, even degree. Well, degree of node is, degree of node is, is how many edges are in this intuit, right? So degree of this one is two, degree of this one is four. Here we have four, four, two, two. So all their cycle exists. Because for every degree, it's, it's divisible by two, it's, it's even, right? And, uh, well, well, intuitively, why, why is that the case? Because all the, all their, the way all their cycle works is, well, I can, I can tell you why, in this case, the other cycle exists. I won't tell you why is it that only in this case it exists, okay? So, wh why does it exist? Basically, each time we enter some node, we know we decrease, we, we know we used up already like one unit of its degree, sort of. And then, when we, and as it's even, there will be always at least one remaining, right? So, so, so now it's three, then, then there is still three remaining, then when I leave, leave it, then I have two remaining, and when I visit again, it's one, and then two, right? So, uh, and then zero, sorry. Uh, so, and, and then we know that at here is the only one that we start that will have one, so we know we have to go back to this one, sort of, right? So, so, so basically, regardless of Basically, path we choose, we would have another cycle, which is wonderful. Basically, we can go here, here, here. Oh, we can't go back to this one. Here, 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 here. Right? And it, and it basically works, right? So because of this property of of, of this. Um, of these degrees, right? So the only thing we cannot go back to this one before the end, right? It's the last thing we do. Like if there are no other options, we go to this one, right? So, so yeah, basically, yeah, basically that, that's the detail. Uh, well, and 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 also there is another property. It's like something less than other cycle is other string. When we when we when it doesn't have to form a cycle, but it has to visit all the edges. So for example, if we remove this edge. Then we have all our cycle starting here and finishing here, right? All, all our string starting here, finishing here, right? And then for it to exist, well, we have to have all the uh, nodes of the even degree, but one or two of them ha can have uh, odd degree, right? Uh, and and because this is because of just removing one edge, basically. That, that's kind of if we add this edge between these two, well, then we have other cycle. So we have some duality because between other cycle and and other strings, and uh, how, how do we use it? Well, basically, that will be a little bit of fiddling with numbers, but there is an, a, a problem in which we have some graph, uh, which, which, which doesn't, which, which is not Euler graph, which, it doesn't contain Euler cycle, it's just some random graph, right? And uh, and we want to, uh, these are bridges between islands. And we want to have such a situation that each, each island of degree at least two has uh, two different colored edges, two different colored bridges. Because the, 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 the head of the company worked out that if we have red and white bridge, 
near each yeah. island, then then yeah. in this island, like in this island, there will be tourists who will be paying more money to go there, stuff, right? And unless we have unless we have edge of degree one, in which case we obviously cannot have the the two two different colored edges because there is only one bridge. Then we don't care. Then it can be our arbitrary one. So. So what do we do? We don't have well, so well. If the graph was was Eulerian, right? If it was something like well, I don't know, like this one, then we don't care because like then it's really easy because we find this other cycle and we we have. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. But the existence of this, even existence of this cycle, is anti-complete problem, which means that there is no simple conditions like uh, like all edges even. There, there is a the the the, the thing is like uh, it, it's the only thing we can do is choose every permutation of nodes and check whether they form a cycle, and that's the best we can do. Well, and if you if you still have like 10 minutes and wish to, well, basically, let's make a vote. If somebody wants to, I can show you like how, like, basically, are, are, so you're second year, which year are you? I'm MPhil. okay. So, did, did you do computer science here? No, um, no, not here. Do you know the satisfiability problem of logical uh, Boolean? Okay, so basically the thing is we have some logical expression, right? So so some 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 a one a two a r a two r a three. Well, no, sorry, the other way around. In in normal conjunctive form, so and so on, and we have these variables, and we think whether. Is is there such a such a such a assignment of true values to these vari variables, true or false, that this whole formula is satisfiable, right? So this is like uh, what we did on the second year uh, on of of computer science, and this is anti-difficult problem basically. But there is a, a sub, sub subclass of this problem which is P and has a really nice solution in graph theory. Uh, and I, I, I actually think it's really bad we didn't have it mentioned on our course because it's, it's such a beautiful algorithm. Well, basically, how, how, how does how does it work? Well, basically, basically, what, what, what's the problem first of all? The problem is called two set, right? And the the problem is we have like some x one and x two or not x2 and x3, say, and so on, right? So, and whether th this thing is satisfiable or not is actually a graph theory problem. And let, let me at least show you how we reduce it to graph theory, and then if you want to hear how to actually solve this problem in graph theory, you can say, no. Well, basically, so, so how do we reduce this in, to graph theory? So basically, this is n, right? And if you if you did like so if you know some basics of logic, you know that. Well, okay, I screwed up here. Uh, these are ors. These are ends. Sorry. Well, it doesn't really matter because we can translate between each form. It's, this one is called conjunctive normal form. And uh, and if we have a implies b, okay. Is exactly the same as not A or B, right? If you don't know that, like you might not know that because you're a first year, right? So just draw a truth table. <laughs> yeah, because if A implies B, then not A implies not B. No, no, no. It's the same. The truth table is not A or B. Um, if you think Wait, about it, like if A implies B then you can't have A and not B because B follows by from A. So it's not A and not B. 
What? The negation in. Well, basically, when, when it comes to implants, it's like truth cannot imply false, because then whole mathematics would be ruined. No theory would apply, right? So this is the whole basics of our proof. We assume something and we, and we derive it from it, and then it is true. So th this means that if we assume something that is true and we derive something else, then this something else is also true, right? That, that, that's basic. So basically, there is only one case in which it fails, right? So it's, it's A equals 1 and B equals 0. And this is exactly the same case in which this one fails, right? If A is 1, we have 0 here. And if B is 0, then we have 0 here. So we have 0 or 0, which is 0, right? So this is equivalent, right? So here what we can do is do treat this as not A or B. So basically change this one to, and this one to, right? Well, and our, our formula, whole formula would be satisfied because we want to find such a variable assignment that this whole formula is satisfied, right? So this whole formula will be satisfied if all, all of these guys will be satisfied because they are, they, 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 they are ended together, right? Well, here also should be ended, right? So how, how do we do this? Well, basically, what we do is we draw a graph, right? And and then and so basically this is an implication graph, and um, and how how to solve it now? So basically, it sort of seems like something connected to topological store here, right? But it's not quite because we can have some cycles here. So how how, how do we do, deal with that? Well, basically. Basically, basically, this pro problem is called dividing the graph into strongly connected components. So basically, we, we would have some some nodes that mutually imply each other. That so such a group of nodes that each one implies every other one, right? So and th this this group can be Treat it as a whole, right? It can either directly imply it or indirectly, like in this case, right? And, and this thing can be treated as a whole because once we set one of these variables, all of them has to be set to true, right? And then, if we, if we divide our graph into such a bubbles of mutually, mutually implying each other thingies, we can, we will notice quickly, that this graph is uh, directed, because it's directed, and icyclic. Because if there was a cycle, say here, then these three would form one big bubble, right? Mm -hmm. Because from every node in here, I could get to this one, I could get to this one, I could get to this one, blah, blah. Like they, they lay on the same cycle, sort of. So, so no, th 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 this thing we, we do not have. And then, the solution is basically this formula is satisfiable if it's not the case that both xi, not xi and xi are in the same strongly connected component. Other, otherwise, we can find such a such a uh, su su such a variable truth true, uh, slash false assignment that, that this formula is actually satisfiable. So. Uh, well, yeah, so, I don't know, do, do you want to hear about finding a strong ecological component algorithm, or who wants to? Okay, one person, so, yeah, you can go guys, <laughs> if you're in the rush, or I, I don't know, like, like whatever you wish, I, I, I already exceeded the time, and I, I will have to actually finish in three minutes, because there is other other people booking the room, so so I can do it really quickly, sort of. So basically, I, I will show you the execution of this graph, of oh, this algorithm, and hopefully you will understand. We will, we will see how it goes. So basically, if we have our graph that is, well, so 
So, well, okay, let's, let's maybe focus on our output and I will show you how the, this. So, so our output would be something like well, this thing, right? And well, how 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 do we basically achieve that? So, so basically, what we do is we we put start p or DFS that numbers these vertices in pre-order, right? So, so but, sorry, pre-order or post-order? Uh, let me think. Uh, well, okay, maybe I will change it later on. Well, one of these. Basically, um, yeah, because we want to then start from this age, so yeah, we want pre 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 order thing. So so it will so so basically, it if we no post order. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, sorry too. So so basically, we 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 want we want to actually enumerate these edges in the post order order. So what we do, we we. We, we start a number of DFSs, and regardless where we start it, it will go to the bottom of the graph, of this graph, and all of these edges here in these strongly connected components will be after these ones. Do we agree, right? So, so there will be one, two, three, four, five here, and then six, seven, eight, nine, and so on here. But let, let's just mark it as one here, basically. But all these edges will be sort of one, this will be two, and this will be three. And assuming we started our DFS from this vertex, vertical, it's the end. But then we start DFS from all the other vert vertices that weren't visited yet, right? So then we start from this one. Well, but we continue our so so we remember the last number here when we continue our numbering. So we start from here. We numerate all of these as like the fourth in the order, and we go here. Well, that's already visited, and then then we we look further over all these vertices and we enumerate this as fifth one. Let me quickly show you. Uh, well basically that, that that's that's what I'm doing here. For all of the vertices, if they are not visited I start this DFS, right? Which which uh, which which basic oh basically does something else. But uh, well, uh, don't worry about it. I, I'm using stack here. I'll explain in a second why I'm using stack. So now what we do is uh, we invert the edges. All of the edges in graph we invert. So so we call we call it G like tra tra G transpose because it's kind of the transposition of edges in matrix basically. We invert all the edges. So if there was edges from from here to here, from some node over here to some node over here, then we transpose this node, and all the internals we transpose, but it doesn't really matter because it's still the cycle. So so we would have something like this, 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 something like this right? And then we start DFS in the order of Inverse, in inverse, inverse order that we calculated. So we start from highest numbers to the lowest, and then we start DFS from these guys, and it won't go any further here because we inverted the edges. So all the di all the nodes that are actually reachable by by this DFS started here are in this strongly connected component. Then we start another DFS from from, and then when when, when we are done, then then we look for another another node that is not visited and we start DFS from here and it won't go any further, right? So it will be all in this connect strongly connected component, right? And the same with this, and same with this, and same with this. Right? So basically that's why I'm using a stack here. So instead of assigning some numbers here, like one, two, three, four, five, I just push them on the stack. Basically I, I push one, two, three, four, five on the stack and then I then I go backwards basically. 
right? I, I, I just I just pop from this stack, and then then once I, after one complete DFS, I mark all the nodes in this DFS as as belonging to one of the strongly connected components. So basically, uh, this is this is basically here. I instead of ordering it, I push it to the order stack, and then well, I mark them before the next set of DFS of the transpose graphs, I mark them as unvisited again. And, uh, and while it's not true that this stack is empty, I take some next node from the top of the stack, and I, I do this backward DFS. I actually didn't test this code yet, so there is a bug here. Should be something like... Well, I'm not writing anything. Also, it should be, if this one is not visited, then... It's in the top right. Uh, you have to click. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 well, don't, let's not worry about it too much. Well, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, doesn't really matter. But, but basically, you see what I mean. Here, it shouldn't be. It should be. Right. If this this one is not visited yet, then we do this inverse DFS, and uh, and inverse DFS basically marks all the nodes that are reachable by this DFS marks their strongly connected component as, as this number and then after each DFS we increase that number well, and that's strongly connected component and that's basically all okay yeah I think we have to finish now so yeah uh, thank you very much for coming uh,